Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you, whether you are a, a return subscriber or a, a new viewer that wants to become a subscriber by clicking subscribe. I appreciate each and every one of you. I'm so glad that you're here. If you need IT consulting, go to willyhow.com, fill out that contact form and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. If you'd like to get your hands on one of these big mamma jammas, one of these Synology UC3200s, which is Synology's entry into the IP sand world reach out we'll help you secure the best pricing on that and we can also talk about the advantages or and maybe disadvantages of having a uh, a sand i can't really think of too many disadvantages if you're a small business the cost may be a little prohibitive but uh you're going to start seeing these next few videos really ramping up what we're going to do is we're going to configure the network um and what you're going to see is that we've got, we're just configuring the management. So in the next set of videos, we're going to configure the iSCSI uh, network and hook it into uh, VMware. But we are going to configure the networking on this. And for the controller to be active, active, what you have to do is you ha have to make sure that you've got high, avail high availability turned on on the network. And so you have to have, you know, multiple network um connections enabled and configured and then you also have to make sure that you have that turned on and it's really easy so i'm going to show you um, exactly what we did and we're going to go over to the software we're going to configure it and we're going to test it out so let's get to it all right so you can see that on each of the controllers i have one i have eth1 from each of these, which is just as uh, one gigabit because we're just using this uh, for the management interface. So for now, we just have one into each of those and they are over here plugged into a switch. This might be, uh, this might be a little dark, but there they are. They're both right there, ports uh, one and two, and they're both plugged in there. So let's hop on over to the uh, computer and look at this setup. All right, so here we are. We're logged into our UC3200. You can see that controller A and B are online. They're talking, which is good. So we're going to hop on over here to the control panel and we're going to go over to network. Now, if uh, we were to, oh, this is the uh, info center. We got to click on actual network here. Now, if we were to set up the network failover, which is one of the big advantages of having a unit like this, is that each of those controllers can uh, take over, you know, if the other one fails. If we go to set network interfaces for failover, you can see it says not using static IP. So we can't select it. So what's that mean? That means that for this to work correctly and by the way, you should never have a device like this that doesn't have a static IP address. All of your servers, all of your storage, all of these things should all have static IP addresses. So if you've got a consultant that tells you that you don't need static IP addresses, please call us right away. And uh, we'll definitely help you out with that. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to go over here uh, and we're going to go to LAN controller A, and you can see it's DHCP. We're going to edit this, and we're going to make it static. And we're going to use 192.168.66.15 for this one. And then for B, that's the one we're connected to now, we are going to use 16. So I'm going to lose connection to this here in just a second, but what we're going to do is we're going to ping 15 and 16. All right, so there's 15. Okay, so now, and it did redirect us, so now both controllers now have a static IP, and you can see that we are pinging those across the network. Now, my machine is uh, wireless. I am not hardwired in. Uh, in the next video, when we're messing with VMware and stuff, I will be hardwired in. But uh, So that may be causing a little bit of issue here. But not really. <laughs> Those uh, pings, spikes from me are not what I want to concentrate on here. What I want to show you is if we go now to set network interface for failover, now 
we can do this. And for this to be an active, active setup, this is what you want to do. And when we get to our iSCSI stuff, we're going to do that. We're going to do that there as well, which will be LAN 3, which is our 10 gig interface. So we're going to use that for iSCSI. Skizzy, scuzzy, whatever. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to check this so that we can do failover on the interface. Now I'm going to bring these pings back up. And what I'm actually going to do, I'm actually going to do two things. First of all, I'm going to come over here to this uh, interface. You can see I was playing around with this earlier. What we're going to do is, you can see here it says network failover protection has been enabled for the following IP. So um, we uh, enabled it there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring these pings back up, and I'm going to unplug one of these cables, and I think I'm going to unplug A. And now watch the pings when I do this. So I just unplugged the cable. So you see that uh, pings to 16 kept going. Pings to 15 have now dropped. Now 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000. So within about 5 seconds, with the cable unplugged, you can see here in the log what happened. The IP address 192.168.66.15 has been taken over by controller B. So what happened was it recognized that there was an outage on controller A and it failed over and controller B took that IP address. So now I'm going to go ahead and plug this back in. So now I just plugged it back in. Now the system is going to recognize that I, you know, that I plugged that back in or that connection is back. And we might see a little blip here. And now we should be, yep, according to the log file, 66.15 return to controller A. So that's how high availability works. That's how this is going to work. You're going to see this more when we start dealing with iSCSI. Um, we're going to break network paths. You know, we're going to keep VMs running and all that good stuff. But this is the very first step in setting up our network properly on the UC3200. All right, that's it for this video. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment, share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you need IT consulting, go to willyhow.com, fill out that contact form, and someone will be in touch as soon as possible. Um, I had a Patreon, um, Patreon set up, and if you have been a patron in the past, thank you very much. You will notice that I have taken that down. Uh, Patreon decided that they had to start doing sales tax and it just becomes an issue. So if you'd like to support the channel, you can reach out. We can talk about how you'd like to do that. You can use the affiliate links down below. Don't feel pressured to do that. They don't change your price, but they do kick a couple bucks over to the channel. But once again, I do appreciate each and every one of you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.